The Airbus A321XLR is a hotly anticipated aircraft, which is currently in its development phase. After having its first flight on June 15, 2022, Airbus is working on completing more prototype units of the XLR for the flight testing phase. Initially, Airbus announced that there would be a total of three prototypes of the XLR, however, in a surprising announcement earlier this week, Airbus confirms there will actually be four prototypes of the XLR. The first prototype, which bears the serial number 11000, was used for the first test flight in June. Two other prototypes are in an advanced stage of manufacturing and should be ready soon. The final prototype is actually an A321 NEO aircraft, which is being modified to resemble the characteristics of the XLR. This aircraft, which has the serial number 6839, has already been fitted with the new inboard flap system, which is unique to the XLR, and Airbus have used the airframe to conduct a test called the Velocity Minimum Unstick, or the absolute minimum speed at which an aircraft can take off. The A321 XLR will see a simpler single-slotted inboard flap system, whereas the A321 NEO uses a double-slotted flap system. The XLR will also see uprated landing gear, wheels and brakes to cope with the additional weight, and a new electronic rudder system, which will be introduced on regular members of the A320 family too. The flight control system of the XLR will be reprogrammed too, so as to cater for an increased maximum takeoff weight. Where the standard A321 NEO tops out at 97 tons, Airbus would be targeting 101 tons as the maximum takeoff weight for the XLR. By the way, if you are liking this video so far, do consider subscribing to the channel as it will certainly help us growing our audience even further. Now back to the XLR. The increase in the weight comes on the back of a new rear center tank, which can hold up to 12,900 liters of fuel and crucial for the advertised 4,700 nautical mile range of the aircraft. This rear center tank, or RCT, has opened a lot of questions regarding safety of the aircraft, especially during a wheels-up landing, where the tank could come into contact with the ground, potentially posing a risk of a fire. Regulators are also keen that passengers who are seated above this tank are not exposed to colder temperatures as generally the temperature of the fuel in the tanks quickly cool down in flight, and without adequate insulation, the passenger cabin above the tank would be a recipient of colder temperatures. Airbus will have to prove to the United States FAA and the European Union's EASA that the XLR is just as safe as a regular member of the A320 family before it can get the final certification. Airbus also detailed how these prototypes would be used in certification and testing processes. The French manufacturer refers to its prototypes as FTV or flying test vehicle. MSN 11000 is FTV1, while MSN 11058 is FTV2. These aircraft will be equipped with a full suite of flight test instrumentation stations and a transferable water ballast system to check the change of center of gravity during flight. The only difference between these aircraft is that FTV-1 uses the CFM-made Leap-1 Alpha engines, whereas FTV-2 will be fitted with the Pratt & Whitney engines. Both engine makers will be available for customers of the aircraft. FTV-1 and FTV-2 will be used to test the aircraft's technical systems, handling, performance and updated flight controls. Airbus says it is certifying the two engine types in parallel on the XLR in the same time scale. However, for performing tests where the engine types are not the focus, the manufacturer says it can use either aircraft. Before the aircraft enters service, Airbus will be carrying out over 100 flight tests on these prototypes. The third prototype, FTV3 which bears serial number MSN 11080, will also be powered by the CFM LEAP engines, but it will carry out tests related to the operational significance of the aircraft. It will be outfitted with a passenger cabin with seats and other amenities, as it will be used for route-proving flights for customers. 
Airbus engineers will test out the thermal comfort of the cabin over 11-hour flights and the impact of noise penetration in the updated cabin with better insulation. FDV3 will be used to demonstrate the aircraft's performance at high takeoff weights on performance-limited runways with high temperatures, as these are the most demanding situations for an aircraft's engines. Airbus is not modifying the thrust rating on the XLR as compared to the standard A321neo. Additionally, customers who ordered the XLR will also be invited to fly on some of the route-proving flights, so they can learn more about the product too. By the fourth quarter of this year, the three aircraft will be flying actively, and the program would have achieved a high level of production maturity, according to Airbus. Sometime around the end of next year, Airbus expects to receive the certification for the aircraft type, as deliveries are planned from early 2024. While the XLR is proving to be a game-changer on paper, it remains to be seen if the aircraft is capable of flying its advertised range throughout the year, and without any restrictions to its weight. Even if the aircraft is successful in performance, what could be a challenge is passenger acceptance, as a narrow-body aircraft with fewer lavatories and amenities on board is less comfortable than a wide-body aircraft. What about you? Would you prefer flying in the XLR for a lower ticket price? Or would you rather stick to the conventional wide-body aircraft on a flight of 10 hours? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, please do consider subscribing to the channel, as it will really help us reach a wider audience. Thank you for watching.